Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Prepping by Faith, and today we're gonna to be talking about moving as a prepper. This is part two. If you missed part one, I will go ahead and link it for you guys in the description box below. In that video, I talked a lot about prioritizing, kind of going through your stuff, figuring out what you wanna keep, what you wanna get rid of, how we got rid of some of those items, the different, um, things that we went through as far as figuring out what to do with those items, how to make a little bit of money on them, and also how to offload them if you can't make any money on those items. That is an important video to check out, especially if you're unsure of what you can take with you. I go over a lot of the different items that are not allowed to be transported during a move, so you need to know about those items, what they are, and what you can do to um, get rid of those items. So in this video, I'm gonna be giving you guys some more tips and tricks that I have learned along the way. So the first thing that I wanted to go over with you guys, and I think this one is really important, is sort of how to camouflage your boxes. And what I mean by that is how to write on them so that you know what's inside of that box, but it doesn't allow a moving company or a moving service or anybody that you are hiring externally to know what is inside of that box so that they have the ability to then take that, steal that item from you. So what we did, is every room I would just write down the um, room that the box came from and then I added a number to that uh, box. So for an example, I am sitting in my study right now. What I did is I would write study on the box in the room description and then I put a number one and circled it and I put it in a couple different places on there. On my notebook, I would write study and I would have the box number and then I would write down all of the contents that were in that box and I am keeping that notebook with us that will be traveling with us. That's gonna have all of the details, all of the items that are in these boxes, but it is not advertised for anyone else so that they know what to steal, you know, so that they have a clear idea of what's in there and what they want. Um, it does not allow them to know about your expensive electronic equipment or generators or anything else that you are moving that's high end, high dollar, that they would be interested in thieving from you. So I think that is sort of a, uh, a good rule, a good standard to use and it's going to help better protect your contents from theft. So the other thing I wanted to talk about is how we were able to um, score some free boxes. So this is why I say that, you know, a lot of people don't want you to be on Facebook. They don't want you to, you know, use a lot of social media. A lot of us, you know, um, we'll talk about how, how awful all those things are, but you know, there are some good reasons for having access to social media. So one of the only reasons that I have um, a personal Facebook account is because I am actually a member of a local group. Um, it's a local community page and it's a great way to score items that, you know, I'm interested in or that I'm trying to sell or give away. And it's also a way to find things for free. So there was a lady that had just moved in to our community and she was giving away all of these free boxes. Now for stuff like that, it has to come across your um, page pretty quick in order for you to be able to um, get a hold of those items. So you always have to be kind of scrolling through this stuff and checking it regularly uh, because there's a lot of other people that are interested in moving boxes too, right? But I was able to get a lot of really nice wardrobe boxes and things like that, um, larger boxes, boxes for you know your mirrors and, and things like that that are harder to come by that are more expensive to purchase from this lady and she didn't want anything um, for it. She had a whole bunch of packing material that we were able to take as well. Um, lots of uh, packing paper that was good to score for free because guys, this stuff has gotten a lot more expensive. And if you haven't priced any of it, you would understand what I'm talking about. But um, the prices just on boxes are, are quite crazy. The other thing I wanted to mention right here while I am talking about boxes is don't cheap out on boxes and just get your regular uh, boxes at the store. You want to get your heavy duty boxes for things that are gonna weigh a lot. If you are moving anything with weight to it, like your canned goods, or you know, freeze dried food that you know, you're packing quite a few of them in there, that weight is going to 
compound um, in that box. You don't want those boxes ripping. You want to use lots of quality tape. I always make sure I tape, you know, the seams, not just down the middle. I will go down that several times, but also you want to go across um, the other direction. You want to get all your corners and your seams. You really want to make sure that you are packing those boxes well if you want all of the contents to make it and nothing to get damaged on the other side. So don't cheap out on boxes. It's kind of like one of those things that we talked about in a previous video where I would was telling you how you know we had cheaped out with plastic shelving so don't treat your boxes like plastic shelving units um, make sure that you upgrade to that that better quality box one of the other things that we had an issue with right was trying to figure out how to get rid of you know some of these items that were um, purchased recently and I discovered something when I went to Sam's Club. So like one of the things that I had purchased a few months ago was a bunch of cases of chafing fuel and I was putting it up for my preps. But as you guys know, if you've watched my other video, that's not an item that you can take with you um, during your move. So what I was able to do and uh, was take this stuff back with me to Sam's Club and their return policy there is that most items, you can return them at any time. Uh, there is no stipulation on how long there are a few things that fall in that typical, you know, 30 to 90 days, usually electronic type items. Or, I mean, there's certain things that you can't return, like gift cards. Everybody knows that. But um, I thought this was a really great discovery. And I honestly wished I had discovered it a little bit sooner because like I told you guys, I had actually sold a whole bunch of, you know, like the, the big packages of Listerine and bathroom products and other things that I had purchased from Sam's Club for half off in my community. And I could have actually taken these items had I already known this back to the store and gotten a full price. You don't need to have your receipts or anything. They have access to your purchase history through your um, membership card and they will go through there and they will help you find these items and they will give you whatever you paid for them back so if you're never in a position like that where you've got a bunch of this stuff and you're moving and you're like what do I do with this if you are you know wanting to get full price back for it I would look into that I don't know what all the other stores policies are like but I would think that you know other stores are probably going to be doing something similar it's worth calling on, it's worth checking into, it's worth digging into what those return policies are because that is a great way to put that money right back into your pocket and you haven't really lost anything. So the other thing that I wanted to touch on, this is the last thing that I wanted to mention in this video, is that if you ever find yourself in a position where you are just left with a lot of junk, let's say you just have some broken furniture or you have stuff that's in really poor condition that you can't even donate and you're like, what do I do with this stuff. Um, one of the things that you can do that is going to be a cheaper solution for you getting rid of that and rather than calling a service like 1-800-GOT-JUNK that is just crazy expensive, guys, I don't know if you've ever called them or priced anything, but they want well over $400 just for like an eighth of a, of a truck, okay? So you're not gonna be able to fit much in there, especially if you're talking about furniture items or something like that. What you can do is find out um, where your local dump is. They will usually charge you um, a fee according to the weight, and you can go ahead and rent a U-Haul truck. So depending on how much you have um, we were able to just fit everything into one of those little 10 foot trucks so it's like $20 for the truck and then you might want to put on in you know pay for the extra for the insurance just to be you know careful and then pay you know you're gonna pay per mile and you know things like that but it's gonna be a way cheaper solution to just go ahead load that stuff up into a u-haul truck and take it to your local dump rather than trying to find one of these services that'll come out and do this. It's gonna save you a lot of money in the end. So these are just a few more tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. I'm sure there will be a part three to this video at some point coming out in the near future. And if you guys have enjoyed this video today, please give me a like, share, and subscribe. And remember to pray, prep, and put God first. God bless.